Hey guys, it's Dr. Tom Chaney, Dr. Stephanie Chaney here from Living Health Integrated Medicine in Annapolis on um, Sunday and we thought we would have a quick conversation about autoimmune diseases. This is something that we're seeing more and more frequently coming into our practice. And so um, we wanted to talk about um, just some of the mechanisms. Maybe some of you aren't familiar with autoimmune diseases, so we'll go through and just talk about what an autoimmune disease is. We'll talk about some different types. We'll go through conventional treatment, talk about um, how conventional medicine typically treats these diseases. And then we're going to get into our approach. And, and then um, I want to know also if you guys have questions about autoimmune conditions, make sure you leave them below and um, chime in and we'll, we'll definitely answer them. So, um, so I'm sure you're probably familiar with autoimmune diseases. They're very common. Um, some of the ones you're probably familiar with would be type 1 diabetes. Um, Hashimoto's is another one. That's a thyroid condition. Celiac disease, which attacks the intestinal tract. Um, we've got MS, um, rheumatoid. rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis. psoriasis. Mm -hmm. So there's all these different named conditions that fall under the umbrella of autoimmune diseases. So why don't you go through, Dr. Steph, just talk about what is the mechanism of an autoimmune condition? <laughs> <laughs> well, there isn't really one mechanism. What it does come down to in part is a genetic predisposition. So um, somebody will have a genetic predisposition to have um, a hyperinflammatory dysregulated immune response to something. And then once that switch is flipped, then there are multiple environmental and internal triggers that perpetuate the autoimmunity um, going forward. So, um, uh, gosh, there's so many. The un what we're finding, because we're having a lot of patients coming in that have multiple autoimmune diseases. So they we're finding that it's not usually just one isolated autoimmune issue, there's usually they're running in packs. So where we have somebody come in with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, they might also have celiac um, or rheumatoid arthritis or psoriasis. Um, we've got patients that have lupus and eczema um, and rheumatoid arthritis. We've got, it's, it's kind of a big mixed bag now. And I think a lot of it has to do in the last 20 or so years that the levels of toxins in our environment has really exceeded our body's ability to handle and withstand it so we're seeing the disease it's it's more common and there's more diseases there's actually over 80 named autoimmune conditions so there's a lot um, of autoimmune diseases and it, there's only over 25 million people diagnosed right and basically um it's a dysregulation of the immune system, in particular, the attack side of the immune system. So there are very, your immune system is really, really complex. Like I, I often kind of, you know, we're in the, in the Naval Academy area in Annapolis, Maryland, and we have a lot of patients that are military and naval, and they kind of appreciate the analogy that I have, but our immune system is really complex like our military. So there's lots of different specialized cells and they all communicate with each other and they don't act necessarily unless they're prompted to by other cells. So something happens, a normal immune response is an invader like a virus would be in the, in the system. Your immune system has uh, been exposed to it before, so now it has the ability to recognize it. It's like in the FBI profile system. And so if you encounter that uh, virus again, that prompts a whole cascade of immune responses to make sure that specific immune cells come in and gobble up that virus, disassemble it, and then other immune cells come in and clean up, clean it up like dump trucks, and then you know the whole system kind of follows that way. So uh, if there's a dysregulation, so there's a hyper um, uh, hyper ability to flag everything as the virus, for example. So now you're attacking food, you're attacking yourself, proteins that are very similar. Um, you're creating like antibodies to the wrong things. Uh, so those are the, the protein um, uh, signalers that basically determine if something's your body or an invader, something that needs to be attacked. And so what happens is there's, there's an overabundance of that happening or there's an overabundance of, um, of uh, macrophage, which is the other immune cell that gobbles things up. So there's too much attacking going on. 
And so what happens is you end up for whatever reason, whether you're attacking food or toxins or you're vi attacking viruses, people have chronic viral infections that they're not even familiar that they have. What can happen is this system just gets so churned up that it hits a genetic switch and, and then that person now starts to wrongly attack a, a lot of different tissues. It can be uh, infection in nature, so you can have chronic um, mycoplasma or chronic viral infections, chronic Lyme, for example, is a very specific type of bacterial infection. Um, and it can sort of persist chronically in the system, which is causing your immune system to chase it and chase it and chase it. And it's like a terrorist invader. It just starts to infiltrate tissues. And so your immune system is going after your troops, if you will, are going into those tissues to attack the virus, attack the mycoplasma, bacteria, whatever it is, fungus, yeast, um, and in doing so, it kind of blows up the whole tissue. So now you've got your thyroid under attack, seemingly, or your joints under attack, seemingly, whatever that may be. And so, um, so the cause could be something like that. It could also be a genetic predisposition to not tolerating the toxins from mold uh, or bacteria um, or algae. Um, and this is a very complex chronic inflammatory uh, a situation called SIRS, C-I-R-S, uh, Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, whereby you have a genetic predisposition to not be able to eliminate toxins that you're exposed to, whether you ingest them or inhale them. Um, uh, a normal person would be able to poop those toxins out, but unfortunately about a quarter of the population, maybe more, genetically can't do that. So over the years, they accumulate more and more and more toxins. Um, from live critters like, like we talked about. So, you know, um, bacteria, mold in the house, mold in the school, workplace, um, water damaged buildings, algae in the pond, in the backyard. Um, uh, you know, vaccines uh, can actually in, in, in directly or directly in, input this into the body. And so that literally reaches a breaking point in the system and now it just goes full blown um, into an autoimmune uh, flare and once that flare has happened now, it's a matter of trying to um, Mitigate for the, all the triggers that are causing it. So um, There are a lot of different autoimmune diseases and they may have different underlying microbial issues um, For example, there's predisposition of Hashimoto's to Epstein-Barr or cytomegalovirus um, Lyme can also induce a sensitivity to that um, gluten becomes a problem in celiac disease, although gluten, uh, the protein found in wheat and other food sensitivities become problematic in a lot of autoimmune patients that just kind of keeps the disease churning. Um, sugar can also then start to dysregulate the immune system even more. Um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis has been associated with things like mycoplasma, which is a type of bacteria, kind of a bacterial fungus um, that apparently can infiltrate the joints. But all of these invaders can sort of take hold if the immune system is suppressed or, or stressed um, past its breaking point if there are other toxins in the, in the environment. And so um, we have to take a very in-depth, multi-pronged approach when we're trying to figure out what is underlying a specific person's specific autoimmune disease so that we can handle getting the body balanced and back on track. And um, it's a very methodical process that we've been able to work out. Yeah, we've got basically two different types of patients that come see us. Uh, the first type is the person that has already been diagnosed with an autoimmune condition. And then we also have patients that come to us, um, maybe they're just experiencing certain health conditions and they don't know they have an autoimmune condition. It's something that we actually um, end up diagnosing when they come into our practice. Now, the ones that have already been diagnosed, we have many of those that come to us after having been to many other providers. Um, so we see patients that have been to rheumatologists, they've been to their primary care, they've been to endocrinologists, neurologists, they've, you know, neurologists. they've been to all these providers and specialists and they just haven't seen any results. And so uh, why don't you talk about like, you know, some of the patients that come see us from other providers, especially the conventional medical providers, how they typically approach this disease. And then we can talk about how we approach it and how, you know, how that's different. So, um, the conventional system will generally 
approach any type of disease with trying to um, diffuse or lessen the symptoms, right? So um, if somebody's been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, it's probably because they had a certain autoimmune disease that caused very severe symptoms that prompted certain workup. So uh, very intense joint pain will prompt a workup for lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. Very intense intestinal pain will cause a doctor to try to rule out celiac disease where you're attacking the intestinal lining. The not obvious ones and the ones that um, will come in that haven't been diagnosed that we are often finding is thyroid um, because in the initial stages of a thyroid autoimmune disease, you actually might have, um, you might feel really good actually because you almost go a little hyperthyroid. So you have all this energy, you know, your weight is not a problem. Um, it's only sort of later down the track of that disease that you start to manifest hypothyroid symptoms. And so we have patients that come in that have, um, you know, maybe a little bit of joint pain. They just think it's, you know, random arthritis or they have chronic headaches. Brain fog is a big one. Um, inexplicable weight gain or weight loss. Um, a lot of the diabetics that we work with think they're type 2 diabetic and we um, they get put on insulin and they're not the typical diabetes looking patient. They're not overweight. They're very thin. Uh, they might have some other things going on and we actually find out that they're really type 1 diabetes because we run the test for those. So we, we end up diagnosing a lot of autoimmune issues in the office. Um, but either way, um, the major ones that cause severe debilitating issues like joint pain, rheumatoid arthritis, um, MS, neurological issues, um, the celiac disease, the, 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 the big thing is they're just trying to knock out the immune attack. And so the only way that the conventional system can do that is through an anti-inflammatory and usually it has to be pretty heavy duty. So they're going to use things like corticosteroids, prednisone, to just completely like wipe out the immune system. Um, now they're using things like chemotherapy drugs um, and a lot of patients that are autoimmune don't even know that that's what they were put on. Things like methotrexate, it's very harsh on the liver. Um, but again, it's a chemotherapy drug. Sometimes they're, they're getting chemotherapy IV, um, which is designed to wipe out very specific lines of those immune cells. So again, you're getting a dampening, but you're not really addressing the underlying cause. Um, and so it becomes this chronic symptom chasing with medication and toxic chemicals. And now you've got a bunch of side effects related to the toxic chemicals. You know, if you're on prednisone for long-term corticosteroids, you're now prone to diabetes, weight gain, high blood pressure. Um, Alzheimer's dementia, osteoporosis, and so you can imagine that that can lead to a bunch of more medications later to deal with those symptoms and side effects. But once again, the actual underlying issue, whether it's a virus, whether it's a biotoxin illness, whether it's mold in the house, whether it's whatever, is not actually being found and addressed, and that's so that's always going to be a problem. So uh, the conventional system is basically anti-inflammatory steroids, chemotherapy drugs. Um, and now they're starting to look at things like IgG or immunoglobulin therapy just as a way to try to figure out how to balance the immune system. Um, but you know, it's not very successful, not very promising. And a lot of these diseases are considered by the conventional system to be literally uncurable. And we're just trying to wipe out the symptoms to make your quality of life better. Yeah. So it's more of a, uh, management of sy sy symptoms and not actually looking for the root causes. So when we have a patient that comes in and they are autoimmune, what we want to do is figure out, okay, what are all the causes and all the triggers? So we yeah. start, you know, Dr. Steph talked about some of the, some of the common um, areas that we look at. So you want to talk about that a little more about our approach? Well, it's just a different viewpoint and how the body actually works. The body knows what it wants to do and it knows how to function if the environment is right. Um, so if the system is attacking itself, that kind of doesn't make sense. There must be some underlying reason for it. And so we don't necessarily want to wipe out the symptoms. Um, you know, we don't want you attacking so much that you end up causing, you know, organ failure or anything, but we really want to run tests. We do very comprehensive testing, very in-depth testing um, to find out what all the triggers are currently in that present time, no matter how long you've had the issue. 
Um, so food intolerance, uh, types of infections, tissues that you might be attacking, uh, foods that you might be attacking. And we kind of just try to calm, calm the, the system a little bit so that we're sort of removing some of the triggers that are keeping the immune system turned up. Um, but we also run genetic testing to determine if biotoxin illness is a problem and a potential or likely underpinning uh, because if you're swimming in toxins that you've been accumulating for 20, 30 years that, that your body cannot eliminate, then you're going to need some assistance in actually eliminating those toxins. And um, there are only a few things that work to actually do that. Um, uh, and so it's determining if that's a problem for you and then where, where to go. If there's a potential of a current, those are inflammation markers that we can run that can help us determine if you're currently being exposed to uh, a biotoxin, environmental toxin, and then we can start hunting around your environment to help out with that. Um, we also have various therapies that we can actually apply like ozone and ultraviolet IV um, at the right time uh, once we start really figuring out, it's like peeling an onion, right? So once we figure out like what are the triggers, what are your genetic susceptibilities, what's likely happening now, um, and then how do we calm the system, how do we get the toxins out, and now we can help reset and rebalance the immune system with things like ozone and ultraviolet IV, which is um, becoming like a very integral part of our treatment protocols. So it's a very integrated approach. Uh, it's a very functional medicine, integrated approach, very holistic um, with our whole medical team working together uh, to really get, you know, all the different facets that are related to your specific autoimmune disease handled. And it, it almost doesn't matter what the autoimmune disease is. Um, whether it's psoriasis or rheumatoid arthritis or celiac disease, uh, you know, there's all these individual things related to each, but the underpinning is trying to find the cause. And so once we do that, what we find is a lot of patients are no longer needing the steroids or no longer needing the anti-inflammatories, the Plaquenil, the immune suppressing drugs. Um, and then they're able to recover from the, the chemical effects of that. Um, and you know, it's a journey. It takes a bit of time. It takes some patience. Um, because even though for some cases the autoimmune disease seems like it's switched on completely overnight, it's going to take some time to unwind that body and get it balanced again. And one of the keys is that um, with each individual that comes in, we're looking for those unique causes for them. So maybe we have two, two people that have the diagnosis of psoriasis, but both of their treatment plans are going to be different because they each have different triggers, they each have different causes, and, and so they're going to have a different treatment plan. There may be some similarities from person to person, but definitely we're going to customize it and put that plan together specifically for that individual. Right. So that's really key. Um, do you want to talk about like a case study that you've seen, like as far as um, one of your patients that came in? Yeah, we actually have, um, I don't know if we've got a, a written or a video of her, but we, we have a patient who I worked with who actually came to us for diabetes um, originally, but she also had rheumatoid arthritis. She was in her 60s and she was on medication for the diabetes, the high blood pressure, the rheumatoid arthritis. And um, so we went after doing what we could to actually eliminate the triggers for the rheumatoid arthritis to actually help reduce her sugars because she came in originally for diabetes reversal. Um, and anything that causes inflammation can cause sugars to go high. So, so we went after that. So it was a lot of food intolerance uh, removal. Um, she had mold in her house. So we had to actually um, help her address that. And uh, she was deficient in various nutrients, so we were doing very specific supplementation with her, very specific nutritional diet protocols with her. Um, and within about a six month period, not only did we reverse her diabetes, but we were actually able to put her into a full remission of her rheumatoid arthritis, and she was able to have her rheumatologist work with her to uh, wean her off of the um, medication that she was on for the autoimmune disease. So she's both diabetes free and rheumatoid arthritis free. Um, we don't really look at things as separate diseases necessarily, you know, diabetes and that it's just a general overall, there's an imbalance, there's a sickness happening, there's a, there's a lot of dysregulation and we just have to figure out um, what the problems are for that patient. I have also had um, a patient uh, who had psoriasis and um, didn't even tell me she had psoriasis. She came in for Hashimoto's thyroid. Um, and she'd had, she was in her fifties. She had psoriasis that was in the back of her neck and, um, 
she never brought this up in her history and she never brought it up uh, during the exam. And uh, I think because she just didn't think it was related to her other condition that she was in here for. Anyway, so we were working on her one autoimmune immune disease, but you know, when you work on one, you're working on the whole immune system. And so um, about four months into working together, she'd been doing really well, she was losing weight, her inflammation was going down, her thyroid, thyroid was regulating. Um, and she brought up the fact that um, her psoriasis about a month in had completely cleared up and she didn't want to say anything right away because um, she'd had it since she was 13 and it's extremely uh, torturous and itchy and painful and you never really want to get your hopes up when, when something like that goes away when you've had it for so long. It's so emotionally and physically debilitating, um, that disease. Um, but it had been gone for several months and she finally brought it up to me because she thought she was in like the safe zone. <laughs> she sort of knew that this was working and it wasn't going to come back. Um, anyway, so psoriasis is a very common thing that we can get rid of. I had my own issues with autoimmune disease, so I, I kind of am like patient zero in our world. Um, I guess I could probably tell my story. Sure. Some of you have read my story in our book, but um, so when I was nine years old, I'm 46 now, um, when I was nine years old, I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't move. Every single joint in the body was swollen, in pain. I couldn't put weight on my feet. I couldn't even roll over off my back to get on my side to get even out of bed. Um, so my dad had to carry me into the hospital because uh, again, I couldn't put weight on my feet. And I uh, you know, had head to toe x-rays in the hospital emergency room. I had you know, many, many, many vials of blood and I was diagnosed at that time at the age of nine with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so pretty much no more ballet, no more competitive swimming. No, nothing really athletic. The joints were just too inflamed. Um, had a really, really hard time with sleeping because the pain was in my shoulders, my neck, my hips, my feet. Um, my, my hands were very, very swollen. All the fingers and the knuckles were extremely swollen if you've ever seen anyone with rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, the approach at the time was just wait and watch and go back to the pediatrician and see what would happen. Um, and so the pediatrician you know, ran his own blood work. Uh, I remember him saying I was a little bit of anemic, so they put me on iron, and uh, and that was it. They just kind of said, well, we'll see where this thing goes, and um, it got to the point where it got so bad about three years later that my elbows had gotten so swollen that they were stuck in a 90 degree angle, and I couldn't bend very well to brush my teeth and brush my hair without a lot of pain. And I also developed psoriasis. So on top of the rheumatoid arthritis causing the joint pain, then I had torturous itching uh, from the psoriasis. So I definitely know from a personal perspective what it is like to have um, these autoimmune diseases. Um, and so at that time, the, the pediatrician said, well, maybe she should go see a rheumatologist. And so we went to the rheumatologist and the rheumatologist um, did her exam and basically told my mother um, as though I wasn't even in the room, that if this is the condition she's in, just be prepared. She m will likely have several joints replaced by the time she's in her mid-20s. Um, I, I had two very disabling, um, debilitating autoimmune diseases, wrote a prescription for prednisone, and wrote a prescription for physical therapy to see if they could do some therapy on my elbows. So I went to therapy, um, and we got the prescription for the steroid, and I never took it. I remember having this moment where I was in the kitchen and I was holding this big, huge horse pill sized steroid. And uh, I remember it's clear as day with 100% certainty on something I knew nothing about, just feeling uh, like a block. Like I couldn't take this medication because if I did, I was not gonna be the same. I was going down a rabbit hole. There had to be a reason why this was happening. I was very fearful of my future and being disabled and having joints replaced and what kind of life was I going to have. And so we decided, you know, we had a, a bit of a meeting because I was, I was refusing the medication and we just decided that we were going to look for alternatives. And so we started seeking out um, alternate types of therapies, nutrition, naturopathic, uh, you know, all kinds of anything natural, basically. I just didn't want to go medical. I wanted to figure out why this was happening and nobody could answer why. And uh, took a lot of trial and error back then. That was many years ago. 
Um, but with no actual medication and doing everything completely naturally, I uh, got myself into complete and full remission of both the rheumatoid arthritis and the psoriasis um, by the time I was in my late teens. And, um, you know, these are not the hands of a rheumatic. These are not the hands that I had when I was a kid. I still have all my own joints. Like I said, I'm 46. No joints have been replaced. Um, and so, uh, you know, when I, when I went into practice, you know, when we went into practice together, one of the things that we wanted to do is, was really try to bring in all these different things that I had experienced myself that were positive towards my healing journey um, and lots of different types of providers and, and different expertise in the holistic world um, all are under one roof. And so that's really the practice that we've created is, you know, where we can take a patient that is in a, in a condition of any type of autoimmune disease and literally back that person out and unwind them now um, with a lot of certainty. Um, and, you know, these are diseases that I even learned when I was in school that you couldn't cure or reverse. And we do it all the time. You know, psoriasis is incurable. Well, we put people with psoriasis into remission all the time. And I can tell you there's almost no greater relief <laughs> than something like rheumatoid arthritis or psoriasis being able to be put into remission. So it is definitely possible. It's just um, there's no one drug that's going to cure any of these diseases. And that's what they keep looking for is this one magic bullet. And there's just no, it doesn't exist. The body's just too complex and it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, the key is the right approach, and, and Dr. Steph, you know, describes her approach, and that's the approach that we take in our practice. You know, we look at all these different factors, and then we customize it, the plan exactly for what the individual needs, and we're always focusing on treating the body naturally, and, um, and we have a good, great success rate. So um, what I'd like to know is if you have an autoimmune condition, um, if you have questions about it, leave them down below. Um, I'd love to hear your comments, questions, just drop them down below and, and we'll be happy to answer them. You guys have a great day and we'll see you soon.